people. Thanks for sharing that, Stephanie. When you think of other people in the Bible, and I'm thinking of two in particular that really felt their need for God. And one of them um, honestly surprised me when I read the story again. And that's the beauty of the Bible. You get in there and you read stuff, and even if you know the story, there are still things when you go back in, you're like, oh, I never caught that. And it was Jacob. So in Genesis, when we did that study a while back as a church, Jacob really came to the forefront in terms of a, a man of faith. Because I'd had, I, for some reason, always kind of just had him stuck as like this guy that deceived his brother and had a really messed up family life with tons of kids. Um, but when you read the story and you look at it, he has this encounter in Genesis, and it's 28, at Bethel. And this is when he's fleeing. He has tricked his brother. He's never going to see his his parents again, really. His parents are are going to pass away before he ever comes back. And he, that's it. He's, he's out of there. He has got to get out of there. He's got to flee for his life. And I can only imagine how bad he must have felt. And he's sleeping on a rock, which might have been normal, but probably isn't very comfortable. I just can't imagine it would be comfortable, no matter where you are, that a rock would be great for a pillow. But he has a rock for a pillow. I mean, talk about a guy that doesn't have very much of anything at this point. <laughs> doesn't even have a pillow. And he's there and he has this dream. And God is showing him this this ladder, right? And the angel's going up and down. And we know, um, having read the story yourself, that that ladder represents Jesus. And how beautiful that is. I don't think that Jacob in later years, when he's looking back on his life with all the hardships, I don't think he would have traded anything. Because God reached out to him and he reached out to him because in that moment Jacob knew that he needed it badly he had screwed up royally and he would continue to mess up but that really was the moment I think when I read that where you see Jacob really having a conversion that's the way that I look at it and God reaching out to him saying yeah you are messed up in it you are poor in spirit and you know what at that moment Jacob becomes a part of God's kingdom. And you see that later as he's leading his family back through there. And he says, we need to get rid of our idols. We need to do these different things. He's not perfect, but because he was willing to say, I need you, God, in my life, basically, God was able to dwell with him. The last one I want to share, and we're going to be a little short today because we want to share some other things.